All right, let's break down the most recent Game of Thrones trailer released by HBO. The first shot is at Castle Black outside where Jon Snow's body is. Because Jon Snow is super dead and totally not coming back. Davos is with Jon's body, ghosts, loyal members of the Night's Watch, at least loyal to Jon, and is guarding his body, ready to kick ass. Which means my guess that Davos was pulling out his sword and the men were joining him to defend Jon's body was correct. Now that we know Ghost is alive, or at least alive at this point in the series, I really want to see him rip out Ollie's throat, which would then be violence towards children, which is not okay. Except in Ollie's case, where it is completely okay. They then show a close-up of a very dead John, who is not coming back, and Tormund says, I thought he was the man to lead us through the long night, and I was wrong. They could be making us believe that he's talking about John, but in reality he's talking about Mance. At least that's the feeling I got from this. But I'm also riding the Jon Snow is coming back alive train to the bitter, bitter end. Next we see Marine, which is looking super frickin' spooky. Someone says to Tyrion, you like games, little man? Obviously someone is trying to intimidate Tyrion, and good luck with that. Next, Jamie is in front of the High Sparrow, and he asks Jamie if he would spill blood in this holy place. And Jamie responds, The gods won't mind. They've spilled more blood than the rest of us, combined. During Jamie's dialogue to the High Sparrow, we also see Melisandre is looking all broody and upset at the wall. In the last trailer, she was taking off her clothes, but she looked not so happy about it. It wasn't a I'm getting naked to seduce you sort of thing, and more of a resign sort of look. So all of this, including her just looking so down in the dumps, could be Mel preparing herself for a ritual or a sacrifice to bring John back. Even if John doesn't come back this season, I'm still gonna be saying shit like this. It's never gonna end. Then we see a dragon flying over the Dothraki, which I'm hoping is Drogon, and he's going to invite them to a tasty barbecue. Bran looks like he's in the tree and is having a vision, probably Tower of Joy or the others. Back to Essos, we see Arya is still putzing around in the House of Black and White, and she's still blind. It appears she's having a terrible time with the Lion Game and just keeps getting smacked around. According to Maisie, Arya's story this season is going to be dark and depressing, so I'm assuming lots of beatings and failing at the Lion Game. Next, Daenerys is being stripped as if they're trying to humiliate her. I'm hoping the Targaryen rage comes out and Drogon makes a visit. I imagine Daenerys is only going to take so much shit before she just snaps and goes a little crazy on them. You generally don't want to back a person into the corner that has a connection to dragons, especially when that person may have a bit of Targaryen madness swirling around in that brain of hers. We jump back to the kindly man cutting faces off and warning Arya she's been given a second chance and there won't be a third. We also know Arya isn't getting as much screen time this season, so I'm guessing this is the extent of her plot for this season, is that she's training, she gets beat a lot, she learns, she fails at the Lion Game quite a bit, and that's the extent of it, and they're just trying to just draw out that plot line as much as possible before moving on to something new in the next season. Sansa is seen in stark embroidered clothing and looks super pissed, but at the same time, so majestic. She says, it's all I think about. And then there's a flash to Ramsay. What was taken from me? She is a woman on a mission, and I think part of this has to do with the backlash they got from last season, and they're making Sansa's character a bit more stronger and have more of a role instead of just being a victim. Then we jump to a fray gathering with lots of Lannister soldiers celebrating something, possibly Red Wedding 2.0, which may have fray pies, which would be so exciting if we got to see some phrase get some comeuppance this season. D&D, I will forgive you for anything and everything. Let us have some fray pies. Then it jumps to Peter Baelish being all Peter Baelish. I wonder if he still thinks he's Batman this season. He looks a little concerned, and I hope it's because Sansa has a word or two with him about his shenanigans. Or, and after I say this, forget that I said it because it's totally not happening, or he meets with a certain old love interest who lets him know that his time is coming to an end. Jorah the Explorer's grayscale is spreading, and we're probably going to have to say goodbye to Jorah Bear soon. And I'm pretty sure he's going to die as he lived, in the friend zone. 
Marjorie visits Loris and they embrace, we know the Tyrells are coming to rescue them. Davos is seen outside of Winterfell and it looks like Stark banners are behind him. Flayed men also mark the approach to Winterfell. So we're probably going to get a proper attack on Winterfell this season. Also, if you're wondering if Davos survives defending Jon Snow's body, I guess here's your answer. He doesn't. Varys and Tyrion are met by a Red Priestess, and it looks like she gave them some unwelcome news. Her smile, though? Super creepy. And she's wearing the same necklace as Melisandre. Nice touch. We saw the same shot of Euron on a bridge while it's raining, and I still think that he kills someone on the bridge. Next, Cersei is telling Jaime to stand at the head of their army where he belongs and show them what Lannisters are. As we see Jaime riding with Lannister soldiers. He is most likely in the Riverlands, where he should have been last fucking season. We get another Tower of Joy flashback with a Kingsguard taking out one of Ned's northern companions, and he has a hella scary scream. Cersei touching Tommen, still manipulating the hell out of him probably. Then she continues with her dialogue saying, What we do to our enemies. And we see the High Sparrow praying, and then a shadow which looks like someone getting stabbed in the back. It's only a shadow, but it sort of looks like Robert Strong is being stabbed in the back. If it is Robert Strong, good luck killing an undead guy. Another thought is that it could be the Mad King, and this is a flashback of Jaime killing him in the throne room, which would actually match up very nicely with Cersei saying what we do to our enemies. Another thought is, is that it could be Pycelle. Asha Yara with other Ironborn, and later Yara is making out with a woman who may have a tear tattoo of a prostitute. Doesn't really look like a tear, and it's under the wrong eye to be a tattoo designating a Volantis slave. Interestingly, George spoke out and said that Yara in the books is not a lesbian or bisexual, so he has no idea why she's making out with someone in the show, which I don't think that really matters towards the plot or anything, but I do find it kind of interesting that George spoke out and was like, yeah, she's not bisexual or a lesbian. I don't know what's going on. But again, being a lesbian or bisexual probably has zero effect on the book plots or even the show plot. It's probably just a, look, a woman's making out with another woman. Woo! Jamie in front of the set with Tyrell forces, obviously aiding the crown, at least for now. Mace, beautiful helm. 10 out of 10, would definitely follow you into battle, lay siege on a castle, and then surrender the instant I saw another army. And this is one of my favorite parts. They show the bullshit that is going on in King's Landing, and then Davos says, the real war is between the living and the dead, as they show the others. Which is what George threw in our face in the very beginning of the first book, but then we sort of forgot and we got all caught up in the War of the Five Kings and all the other scheming. That stuff won't matter in the end. Davos's line, make no mistake, the dead are coming, so good. And if you notice in the background, we see some House Mormont banners. Also looks like Davos and Sansa are in the same building, so I guess we'll see with that. Then we see the others around a lot of fire and lots of whites, which means we're probably getting some more awesome undead battles this season. Then we see Blood Raven, and he looks so sad. Of course, I'd feel sad too if I had an epic duel with my bastard half-brother and lost an eye and nobody seemed to acknowledge it. And it almost looks like he's at the Tower of Joy scene, which means Bran is seeing it through a vision. Next, we get a bunch of images, Tormund pulling out his sword, Arya training, Ramsay looking smug, archers, more Cersei, Jaime, twin Seth, Sons of the Harpy, stabby time, Theon crying, maybe reunited with his sister. I'm still pulling for Theon and Sansa run, they're chased down by Bolton men and the hounds, and then Brienne ends up finding them and rescuing them, and she has fulfilled another oath to at least save one of Catelyn's daughters. We also see Brienne and Podrick with Tully forces, with Jaime and Brienne both in the Riverlands, I'm hoping for a Jaime brienne reunion. Then, Robert Strong messing up some sparrows, quite possibly tearing one's head clean from his shoulders, and Dragon flying overhead. Tyrion saying dragons don't do well in captivity, more Bolton army, Pod being grabbed around the neck, which I'm not too worried about, it sort of looked like Bronn grabbed him around the throat. We see a giant bursting through a gate, which I hope is because they're pissed about Jon, and Mira looking scared. 
Lastly, Tyrion is where Daenerys locked up two of her dragons, which is exactly what I thought last trailer, and I like how they did this. I don't think Tyrion is going for the O line. I don't think they would waste his character in that way, right? D&D, please. So I think Tyrion is safe, and if they were doing the O line, I really doubt they would show it in the trailer, or at least right as it happened. I, I don't think they'd be that wasteful. I could be wrong, but I guess I hope they're not going to be that wasteful, and we're not giving Tyrion uh, another character's ending. So those are my thoughts, not yours. I'm probably going to have a million more thoughts as I think about this more and more and agonize over the fact that it is not the 24th of April yet. You can put your thoughts down below. You can tell me I was completely wrong. It doesn't matter because nobody knows for sure. We're all making guesses at this point. Besides that, make sure you hit the like button. It helps out the channel and video a ton and come back every week for new Game of Thrones videos. Besides that, we have comics. Star Wars if I ever get around to it lately, and besides that, have a fantastic week. Choo-choo, all aboard the Jon Snow Hype Express.